Well, what are we up to now? 204 hour time again. Always seems to be again with transmissions, all sorts. Well, we're in the process of putting together a 204R for a 32 Dew Scoop Street Rod. It has a Turbo 350 in it with a roughly a 273 gear in it, but the owner wants to change it out for like a 355 gear in the back, but he wants to keep his fuel economy, so the best combination would be a 204R because it's a very, very limited the space that he has, and this is really the smallest overdrive that we could find. And there's a few things that I've learned since I put together the one in my Vista Cruiser which has subsequently been modified in itself. A weak spot in these things that we're finding, you have to be very careful with them, is uh, the low sprag in them. Some of the older ones have a fiber washer that sits in the back over there that can give a lot of problems and that's what went on my Vista Cruiser actually and subsequently caused this, um, this gear of, or, or this um, inner race over here to shatter. But fortunately it was caught in time just as we were leaving to go to a car show so that's subsequently been repaired and while the transmission was out we also put in this is not a Kevlar band but we still had a the counterpart of this a wide band and the Kevlar put into that but this band will work perfectly fine for this it's um, wider than the stock one which we have here you can see the difference in height and that means a lot more grab a lot more bang for your buck in combination with what this fellow has because he has, because this is a transmission out of a, a 442 Cutlass, he has the larger second gear servo, which gives you a lot more push against that band. And my Vista Cruiser, what I did to go in conjunction with the Kevlar band that I have, is to put in the Sonics Formance servo, which is actually a larger servo than this one over here, so it gives a lot more bite with that band for a heavier car. The unit is shifting very, very well, and we're going to do the same with this one over here. Every time we do one of these, we learn a little bit more about them, and um, we'll show some step-by-steps as, as we can go of what we can get done today. There's no rush. We have all winter to do this, so we'll get it done. Stick along for the journey, and we'll see what happens. Okay, folks, what stage are we at? We got the rear planetary assembly in, all the clutches in, our clearances are checked, our lower reverse are within spec. And we're going to get a, um, we're going to give an air pressure check to the low reverse clutch to that hole over there, please, assistant. They move, they lock. That means you're perfect. Thank you very much. That means our clutches are working just fine with just simple air pressure, and so they'll work perfectly fine with a high volume of oil and the pressure that it's going to work at. Cleanliness, clean, clean. Keep everything nice and clean, of course, all the time. And we've already got. We already have our reverse high clutch assembly put together down there. And we'll give a quick demonstration of air pressure checks over here too. There we go. Perfect. So see how that one works too as well now. And what we're gonna do is we are going to stack in our forward clutch assemblies now. We've been soaking these plates in oil in there. They have to soak for a good 15-20 minutes, which they've been doing. So we'll just get them stacked in. We had our wavy in there with a um, then with the steel on top of it, a friction, another flat steel plate. Friction, steel, and our last friction, the four clutch and a 204R comprises of four frictions and several steels, and of course your pressure plate on the top, and we'll get our ring put in, see if we can do this single handedly with the camera, maybe I'll get my assistant to do that if he doesn't mind. Do an air pressure check on it in a second. Okay, now we'll get the air pressure check done here once again. And of course we'll air pressure check it once it's inside the transmission, but you want to do all these steps now. We, of course you measure for clearance. It'll be this one over here, I believe. Nope, wrong one. 
this one over here. There we go. Perfect. So that works just fine. Now you have to check your clutch clearances. You don't want to have too much or too little. Roughly anywhere between, well, anywhere between to 0 0.040 to 0 0.055, 0 0.060 is usually enough for clutches. Give you um, between a good engagement and also allowing enough lubricating oil to be in between them when it's um, when they, when they're not engaged, so they don't burn on you or anything like that. But there we go, progressing bit by bit. We're getting there. Now we're gonna soak the band. You gotta always soak your bands with friction materials when they're new. So get this bugger soaking over here now. Boink. High performance band. That's right. Got a high performance wide band, wide alto band they call those. We'll see you in a little while, people. Take care. Bye-bye. Pressure checks. Yes, it's working that one. That's your forward clutch. Now we're going to test our reverse, our reverse high. Away we go. Pump. All right. Now we'll try. I will try our. And it's working. And here it going clunk clunk back and forth on and off. We'll check our overdrive afterwards once we get that on. That goes through here and is up to that piston and cylinder in there which will engage the overdrive clutch. So we're progressing. So far our pressure checks are showing that it's working. But it all comes down to when you plunk it into gear for the first time. More later. We're just tightening up the pump halves in lieu of the proper tools. We're using tie wraps to align the pump halves sitting on top of the torque converter itself. So that way, if we're even off by a few thousandths of an inch, you can end up really messing up your torque converter bushing. So you want to make sure everything is right on line. Front parts are back in, overdrive clutch. They're behind the, they're sitting behind the uh, oil slinger. And we're just about to the point of where we're basically have putting a shift kit into a transmission. There's your second band moving down. That's the wide band that we have in there now. Pretty much progressed. We're on our way. And we got the front pump in. Turn the air on, Dad. Okay, we got our front pump back in the assembly over here. We got our proper clearances checked, measured, all proper. Now we're going to check our second clutch. Perfect. Works just fine. And there we go. We'll have more of this within a week or so. We've pretty much wrapping up for the day. We got to shave down our pin for the servo because we have that new band in place. Um, with that new band in place, so we pretty much have to shave down the pin to fit because it was too tight a clearance when we gave it a check test. And if that band is too tight with the servo cover on, you're gonna burn it out pretty fast. So we'll have to do, I'll shave it down maybe 50 thou or something like that, but that should just be what we need, what the doctor will call for, and then we'll be able to get it back in. And this is the Grand National type servo. It has a larger apply surface area in the piston, by the way. This is what the hot rodders and folks go after if they if they don't want to bother getting the Sonics um, um, servo like I have in my station wagon. But this one works plenty fine on its own too. So um, look at this one—a pretty decent shift, nice and mild at low throttle, but a nice wicked, probably a screech shift under high throttle. Well, more to come later, people. Off to watch the NASCAR races now.